Hey guys, me, Ronald Chris Tomer here with this Monday mountain weather update. I want to take you to Big Bear, California. Look at that. The gold falling from the sky. Finally getting some new snow here across parts of the Southern Sierra, uh, including rain in Los Angeles, snow up here at the higher elevations. It's just so good to see this moisture coming down. They're reporting four inches roughly of new snow in the last 24 hours up there at Big Bear. And you've still got more on the way. Uh, as well. So awesome to see that. Um, let me just take you into um, Colorado, clear as a bell. So the storm system is sitting over in Southern California. Everybody else is dry through the interior Rockies. Uh, this is a crystal clear morning up here. Uh, Loveland ski area, Breckenridge also looking good. It's a waiting game now. Um, the next chance, the next storm system doesn't come in with the pattern until the pattern change hits. Um, that really that that last day of January through the first week of February. Um, in fact, here's radar. I mean, it's there's just nothing on it. You got to go into Southern California, and there it is. You can see the rotation around this area of low pressure, um, snow above 4,000 roughly, with rain across a lot of the uh, um, the wildfires and the burn scars. You may see debris flows as a result of the uh, the rain intensity. But uh, moisture nonetheless, higher humidity and onshore flow, um, a reversal in weather essentially from just so long with, with dry, warm Santa Ana winds now seeing moisture. Um, let me take you up into the northeast. This is the first of two different Alberta clippers. This one will come through tomorrow. The one behind it will come through the following day. And that's where we're going to see light to moderate snow accumulations. Alberta clippers are just fast, weak storm systems born up in Alberta. And they just race through the Great Lakes and a lot of the, uh, um, the northeast. All right, so here's water vapor satellite imagery. Give you the lay of the land here. So oranges and reds are going to be your drier air in the lower levels. And then your whites and blues are going to be your moisture. And you can see this area of low pressure here spinning across Southern California. It's almost cut off, but eventually it's going to make its move, eject out towards the four corners, running through Arizona, Southern Utah, Southern Colorado, and then into New Mexico, where it could spin up into a slightly stronger storm system, um, which tends to happen in that preferred Albuquerque low position off the southeast flanks of the uh, the Rockies there. Uh, and so we could see some active weather if that does happen. Um, you can see the clipper up here kind of racing through the, uh, the upper Midwest. And then behind it, you can kind of see this big trough that's developing out here. That's all associated with our, our big pattern shift that's going to move in. Um, that last day of January, first week of February, but there have been some interesting trends with this. Um, let me take you to my bullet points here this morning. So we've got the California low with rain and snow, turns into a four corners low, and then the new pattern comes in, but everything is trending further north. So the jet's going to stay further north, the steering winds, and I'll show you the jet in just a sec. What that does is it takes the emphasis or the storm track and it, it keeps it further north. And so all the heavier snow amounts will be trending a little bit further north. You'll see that reflected in my numbers coming up. What does make it into the Sierra looks like it's going to be pretty warm. I think the snow levels by the time this pattern change hits could be 8,000 feet or higher across a lot of Tahoe, um, all the way up into parts of, uh, you know, even Shasta and Mount Ashland there in southern Oregon. So we're going to see pretty high snow levels uh, with this, this setup coming. Here's an update on where we stand. Season uh, to date totals. Revel Stoke doing well, 256, uh, although you're in a dry stretch now, but you've got heavy snow coming with the pattern shift. Mount Bachelor, 244. You need snow. It's been a dry stretch. You've got some coming. Um, Alta, 238. Jackson Hole, 217. You can see the other numbers. Um, Palisades, Bridger Bowl, all in the same neighborhood. Loveland's at 141. Um, here's what I've got coming. Here's the. Uh, Timeline for best odds of snow. Uh, Big Sky, Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado, Interior, BC, Tahoe, and the Northeast. So in Big Sky, uh, you've got moderate to heavy snow coming, 2-1, two, 2-2, one, two, two, and 2-3 two, with that, that pattern shift. The Wasatch, 2-1, two, 2-2, two, two, moderate to heavy. In the Tetons, you've got uh, you've got heavy snow coming late, 131, 2-1, two, and 2-2. Two, two, and, and actually, as of right now, the Tetons are one of my bigger bullseyes. Uh, in Colorado, you're kind of on the periphery. 
Um, but you, you probably will see light to moderate snow, 2122. Now, even before that in the southern mountains, you'll have snow coming through uh, with that southern track low. But then once we get to the pattern shift, it's 2122. Interior BC, you've got heavy snow coming late 130 into 21 Tahoe. Heavy 131 to 21, but keep in mind the higher snow levels. And the northeast, uh, a few different clipper systems with light to moderate accumulations. All right, let's talk about the jet stream since I mentioned this. All right, so I'm going to start this. This is the forecast jet stream. Now, on this particular map, I'm looking for the brighter colors, the reds, the oranges, the purples, the tans. That represents higher winds at jet stream level, about 30,000 feet up. The higher winds are what steer these storm systems around and help you to spot changes in the storm track. So uh, you can see the, the area of low pressure over California, Southern California right now. Start this at lunchtime today. And, and then the colors correspond to the legend off, the right, off to the right-hand side. And all of these numbers are in knots at that level in the atmosphere. Uh, okay, here we go. Late today, low starts to make its move. Here's late on Wednesday. By this point, the low is crossing the four corners and could potentially be strengthening as it approaches that Albuquerque, Panhandle, Texas, Oklahoma type position. Here we are early on Thursday. The low departs by late on Thursday out into the plains where we could see showers and thunderstorms, maybe even some wraparound snows through West Texas. We'll have to see. But certainly that would be the case. You'll have some snow falling. Um, residual snow there over parts of northern New Mexico and southern Colorado. Okay, now, here we have to focus. This is the final day right here of January. Look to the Pacific Northwest. We start to see the pattern shift. You can see the jet streak coming in, and there's a, a bit of a dip there in the Pacific Northwest. So that's the start of it. Here we are by late on the 31st. Also notice through the, the Mid-Atlantic uh, sliding towards the East Coast, that may develop into an area of low pressure for the Northeast around February 1st. We'll have to wait and see. All right, this is early on the 1st. You can see the strong jet stream plowing into the West, but everything is pretty far to the North. The, the core of that jet is, is running right through Idaho, Wyoming, and Oregon. And so that's where we're probably gonna see most of the accumulation, at least there. All right, here's late on the 1st. There's late on the 2nd. There's late on the third. So a bit of a tilt there, which would favor a lot of Washington, Oregon, and even the Sierra at that point, with overrunning precip into the interior. Um, okay, so there's early on the fourth. Not a lot of change, but you can see, I mean, there's definitely a shift there coming uh, in the forecast. All right, let's look at uh, snowfall accumulation over time. Okay, so on this particular map, I'm going to start this at lunchtime today. Um, and the light blues correspond to under three inches. You pop into the greens, that's three to six, and the yellows are over six. Notice in Southern California, you've got uh, snow. Also, that's, of course, valley rains. And look at the clipper racing through the Great Lakes. That's headed towards the northeast. All right, there's late today. There's a lunchtime tomorrow. So you've got snow in the northeast from the clipper number one. There's another one behind it. Look at the streaks coming out of Canada. Um, our low in the desert southwest is moving towards the four corners. Here's late on Tuesday. There's lunchtime on Wednesday. Snow in the northeast. Some lake effect as well. But snow across the four corners. Snow in southern Colorado, northern New Mexico. Quite a bit of snow for Snowball, Arizona. Uh, there's late on Wednesday. Now, uh, at this point, again, there may be some development with that area of low pressure, so a little bit heavier snow, southern Colorado, northern New Mexico. Here's early on Thursday. Potentially, this model pushes snow up to Colorado Springs and Denver. We'll see if that happens. It'd be light. Um, potentially some up on the Continental Divide. There's late on Thursday. That load diminishes. Here comes our pattern shift. So here's late on the 31st. Look at the heavy snow. Look at the reds coming out there. That's that's basically 10 to a foot or more up through BC along the coastal range, up into Washington, the high cascades, the volcanoes down into Oregon. You've got some pretty good colors there through Idaho, uh, Schweitzer running into northwest Montana, and then directing that flow right towards the Tetons and heavy snow through interior BC. Again, just the start. Here's a lunchtime on February 1st. Look at all the snow dropping down, now targeting the uh, 
the Wasatch, the High Uintas, potentially the central and northern mountains of Colorado, some snow for the Sierra. Here we are by late on the 1st, many of the same places. Uh, and then the snow kind of sets up right here. This is uh, lunchtime on February 2nd over many of the same spots. There's late on the 2nd, another storm for the northeast. Um, but our storm and our pattern, you can, I mean, you can really see where that jet stream set up. That's what's really, that's where you're delivering these heavy snow mounts to the west. And it's not going much further south than that. Um, here we are by early on February 3rd. I mean, look at the Tetons. <laughs> Just kidding. Nailed with heavy snow through this period. Um, and, of course, Shasta with the higher elevations there of Shasta. You're going to get a lot of snow out of this. There's late on the 3rd that pattern starts to shift out and then we'll have to see what comes in next okay here's my uh, official forecast um, all of today through the second we'll start in the the watch um, i've got four to eight probably four inches of accumulation right there now, those numbers are in flux those could certainly go up if the storm track or the jet shifts just a little bit further to the south you bring in more moisture and better lift so we'll have to wait and see but right now with that that setup it really targets the tetons i've got one to two feet of accumulation just through the second for the tetons um probably five to six up there big sky bridger bowl a few in red lodge um, eights up there through whitefish idaho's in great shape um potentially over a foot from brundage north into schweitzer I've got about a foot there through Red or Red Mountain and uh, Kicking Horse and, and Rebel Stoke. So you're going to have powder days ahead. Less as you drop down into Banff. One to two feet or more through the Pacific Northwest running down through Oregon. Now keep in mind the high snow levels. That's what I had to tailor. I tailored Mount Ashland because over half the precip could fall as rain. Uh, even at higher elevations of Mount Ashland. So probably a foot, but... It, Notice, I mean, the, the issue is going to be the rain mixing in. Shasta at the higher elevations, three feet. Um, six to ten there through the Sierra, above 8,000 feet. And, and there's probably going to be bigger numbers than this above 9,000 over the Sierra. In Colorado, two to five central to northern mountains. Um, potentially three to six, three to eight through the San Juans. And then higher amounts, Cuchara. Um, down towards Tao, Ski Santa Fe, and Angel Fire of potentially 8 to 10 or even 12. I've got 16. That hasn't changed from yesterday for Snowball, Arizona. All right, in the northeast, again, two or three different clippers, uh, and we get a total of accumulation of, um, again, this is, a, this is a rolling accumulation, so it doesn't all come at one time, but 4 to 8 inches through a lot of Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. Um, lake effect will... Probably nail Snow Ridge with 16 to 18 inches, maybe more beyond this period. We'll see Whiteface at about 7. Okay, guys, we'll end on the, the big western map here. We've got an exciting period ahead, finally, right? Something different coming for the west. It really just depends on where the storm track sets up. Right now it's trending a little bit further north, but we'll see what the data looks like later today and tomorrow. Guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.